had a tree. Violet, do you like snow? Talking about kids, or well, the ones in the city might have been hoping for a snow day today, but that didn't happen. New York City's public schools are starting on time this morning. I mean, they just had a three-day weekend. How much more do they want? Exactly. Let me tell you, when I was a kid, my mother would look out the window and she would say, you know, I think there's two feet of snow and you're three feet tall. Get out there. Welcome to New York's first measurable winter storm. It's been 701 days since we've seen this. I'm sorry. I bumped into him. But admittedly, it's not really amounting to much. This is all we've got. And look at the visibility. That's the tallest building in Brooklyn. Can't even see it on a day like today. But apparently the reason it hasn't snowed much is because storms have a warm side and a cold side. And over the last couple of years, New York has been on the warmer side of all of these weather systems, which is why we haven't really seen this. But earlier in the day, there was actual snow falling. It looked kind of nice. But right now, the ground is absolutely frozen. Thank you, Apple, for using your millions to plow your sidewalk. Figure they could have at least put down some salt. But even though most New Yorkers were excited to see snow for the first time in a while, ask anyone who lives here. Snow sucks. It's awful to have to deal with this. It makes your life miserable. So obviously, living in a big city like New York, you rely on the city of New York to keep the roads clean. And right now, they look pretty good. Again, we've got rain earlier today when it was snowing. Things also looked pretty good. And one of the smart things that the city does is they actually convert the dump trucks into snow plows. They're a very large, very heavy vehicle, and it's easy for them to go down a road that might be a lot worse off than this snow-wise, make it through because the vehicle's heavy, spread salt, clear a path. And since they're a wide vehicle and New York City's got wide streets, it works out pretty well when the plows are put into use. But even though the roads might look good, look at the bike lane. You can't ride down that safely. I mean, you could try, but you're not going to go that fast. And it seems like even though New York is going all out on bike lanes, they still don't really know how to take care of them. Also, I'm not noticing a whole bunch of salt on the roads, but I did see some salt yesterday. Perhaps it's all gone now that it's mixed in with the water. Also, most people don't know this, but the Department of Sanitation, they have 700 million pounds of road salt just sitting around waiting to be used, which means that perhaps they were quite eager to spread it around everywhere except the bike lane. Did they do a good job on the roads today? What do you think? It looks okay. Did they get lucky because it's rain and not snow? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> now look, big city like New York, really high taxes. We pay a lot to live here. You'd expect them to do something to keep the roads clean. But believe it or not, even after they do that, there's still an area of the city that's very dangerous for your average walking New Yorker. And it's not something that's the city's problem to deal with. We've got some apartments and believe it or not, the requirements for owners when it comes to snow here in New York, they are super strict and a lot of owners don't do what they're supposed to do. If you own a building or apartment, you're supposed to clean the sidewalk and create a path that is four feet long so that people can walk down it. Four feet wide, I mean. And that's about from here to right over here. These guys did a great job, but the neighbors right now are getting an F. And you see this building right here on the corner. Not only is it a requirement that they take care of the sidewalk, they also have to go all the way to the crosswalk, which they obviously have not done yet. In fact, this entire corner here, all the way to those stores is an absolute mess. You see this over here? This is what you're supposed to do all the way to the crosswalk so that people can walk through it if they want to. And if you own a building that's near a bus stop or a fire hydrant, if this were a fire hydrant, you'd have to shovel this too. Now, if you don't clean your sidewalk, the city he can fine you for non-compliance. $100 for the first offense, $150 for the second, and $250 for third and subsequent offenses. And you see all this right here? This brown stuff, this is salt that's kind of mixed in with the slush, but they haven't plowed yet. But the frustrating thing about walking around when it snows is that every building obviously does things differently, and there's a worker shortage. So 
the guy you have lined up to shovel and salt the place, he could quit and now you're gonna get a fine. And as a real estate agent, I actually have firsthand experience dealing with snow in New York. And at one point I actually did property management for a townhouse like this that was under construction. The place had been purchased and the new owners didn't have a team lined up. So I had to basically get a super and maintenance from scratch. And the best plan that I could come up with was to hire the guy who I met taking care of the occupied property next door because they were already paying him to show up and do their place. And if I paid him to show up and do my place, the chances of him flaking on everybody, not as high as if I had my own person. This sidewalk looks pretty good. It could very well be that whoever's working on this place is also working on this place, but not necessarily these two places. And this right here is not a good look. You could get a fine for this. Plus it's conceivable that if your sidewalk's not clear, someone walking on it like I am right now could slip and fall. And then, I mean, it's America, oh, the building might get sued. Also the neighbors, if they see that your sidewalk's not clear, they can actually call 311 and file a complaint. And complaints definitely happen. This is New York, people are in a rush and if they're walking with their coffee and they slip a little bit and spill it, you're gonna hear about it. That coffee was like $8, man. They're gonna call 311 and get you back. But that leads us to the next problem New Yorkers are going to experience when it snows, even if the landlords and the city do everything they're supposed to do. So even if everyone does what they're supposed to do, which does happen sometimes it's still incredibly treacherous out here and it's unfortunately your responsibility to make sure that you survive you put snow tires on your car and those are what you need for your feet i don't actually think these are snow tires but the point still stands you want to make sure you've got traction because it's slippery and if you don't have a good tread like you have a worn out pair of sneakers and you slip and fall that's going to be dangerous also in new york you're not falling on a nice soft passive patch of grass either. You're falling on solid asphalt and that is just, it is unforgiving, man. It really hurts. Don't let yourself have that happen to you. And even though landlords and businesses are required to keep the sidewalks clean, they don't have to shovel snow constantly. And they've got a window of a few hours to take action after the snow stops falling. That's when the clock starts ticking. You could essentially be crossing the street somewhere and it could be fine one minute and then you come back in two hours and it's just an absolute death trap. It's possible for weather conditions to change in just the span of a short period of time. And that's why it's generally a terrible idea to be flipping through your phone trying to walk down a potentially icy street. That's a big mistake. Don't do it. How's the riding weather today? Um, Hanging in there? Hang in. Making it. You got the GoPro. Do you make some videos? I do. You do? Where can people find them and learn about them? I don't have anywhere yet. Nowhere yet. That's just so you can sue the driver who was watching TikTok when they ran into you. And so I'm not accused of uh, being still in the food. People on bikes, they definitely have it tough, but there's one obstacle on every street that even if it's clear, is something that is probably the most dangerous, treacherous part of walking around New York. And it's something that most people don't even think of. These crosswalks are potential nightmares and they're at every street corner. And even though these have some little ridges in them, they are still very slippery. And we're in a nice part of town. If we were in a bad part of town, these wouldn't even be here. Well, look at these things. What an absolute disaster. You gotta be careful. And that's because for water drainage reasons, the road is lower than the sidewalk and this is how you get up onto it. And to be quite honest with you, many times you're probably better off just walking over the curb instead of taking your chances on a 30, 40 degree slope when it's slush filled and covered in slippery ice. Now, again, we're in Borum Hill, the city's most expensive neighborhood. But other neighborhoods with older sidewalks that are in worse condition or have uh, streets with maybe a different gradation to them, those can be super dangerous. And most people don't realize it because you walk the same path every single day, right? And then the one day when it's icy and slushy, you think you're good, but you're not. And then bam, you fall down like we talked about. Most of the people on the side of the road right now know where they are. They've walked these routes before. But again, New York has not had any snow in two days years. People aren't used to what's going on here. And that brings us to the next thing that you have to watch out for, which could be a lot worse than falling on the sidewalk. Yeah, 
Yes, that's right. The next thing on our list, cars in the street. And the drivers are so confident in their driving prowess that they're usually watching a TikTok or texting their friends. But on an icy day, that's a big problem. Obviously, it takes vehicles that are heavy longer to stop. But with no snow in two years, many of the drivers on the road aren't prepared for these conditions either. Which basically means that being out on the road on a day like today is riskier than it's ever been. And there's another reason for that, too, that you wouldn't think of. Which is that snow acts as a sound insulator. When there's a lot of snow, it's hard to hear cars driving down the street because there's no road noise. The snow eats it all up. Which means you could be walking along, doing your thing, listening to music on your headphones, unaware that a vehicle's approaching when you cross the street, and then disaster could strike. Again, today is a poor example of that, but if the snow were worse and the roads were not plowed, you might not hear a threat rounding the corner, and then everyone's day is now ruined. And as a pedestrian trying to survive on these streets, your full-time job becomes accident avoidance when you're out here, especially when it's snowing like it is today. But there's another part of the city millions of New Yorkers use every single day. And many people think the city is lying to us when they tell us that this thing that we all rely on is under control and isn't really affected by the weather. Ah, the subway. Every New Yorker's favorite place to be when it's snowing. Not really. Now the MTA insists that the subway should be relatively unaffected by normal weather patterns. But sadly, that's not the case. Look at all those delays. Now the reason they say that things down here should be fine is because most of the tracks are underground. Now in Manhattan, that's true. If you live in Manhattan, you're not gonna have a lot of problems with the train. But here we are in Brooklyn waiting for the train and everybody's waiting. But even though many areas of the subway are completely underground, the subway is extremely old and it's fallen apart. And it's still possible for water to get into the system. The subway's about 100 years old, and you can still see pieces of it that might be also 100 years old. For example, just look at this ceiling up here. It's falling apart. You've got old pipes. You've got old lights. Look at this crazy glass wall over here. This thing is ancient. And because the system's old, water leaks in. That causes delays. Also, many of the trains that are delayed today have an above-ground component to their track. And that's why you see so many people standing around. The above-ground trains, those are the ones getting delayed. Snow and ice can really cause disasters on the train tracks. And what most people don't know is the city actually employs little snowplow, snowshoey type things on some of its trains. And when there are service disruptions that are because there's snow on the tracks, they'll continue running the trains because what that does is it allows them to clear a path for future trains to go by once the weather subsides. Which means that just like an airport, the MTA employs de-icing solutions for its equipment. But unfortunately, delays are the name of the game if you live in Brooklyn or Queens. And whenever there's a weather-related anything, it seems like there's always a train related issue. Local routes are disrupted, trains never seem to arrive at the stations, and a lot of the stations have like that little thing that tells you when the next train is coming. Nothing is more frustrating than seeing that have a flashing zero on it, which means a train is supposed to be pulling into the station and nothing shows up. But the real problem is what happens when you think you're in the clear and you try to take the train somewhere, but then when you get to your destination, there's a snowstorm and then all of your travel options get shut down. That's terrible. When that happens, you know you're in for the worst commute of your life because if you're in a station, you're gonna be standing there all week and Ubers are gonna cost you $300 just to get across the bridge because there's traffic jams. But even though the snow is a nightmare and it pretty much ruins everything about living in New York, there's one thing that happened today that I thought was pretty cool. And that is the look on the face of a one-year-old when she sees snow for the first time. My four-year-old, she already knows what the snow looks like, but the one-year-old, she was completely confused. I don't really think she knew what to do. She didn't seem to want to go anywhere. She just kind of planted her feet and stayed right there. But you know what? That was worth it. Anyway, snow in New York, what do you think about it? Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.